こんにちは。Hello, I am a researcher from the Squid Research Lab, where we study mysterious squid that can change into humanoid form. To everyone who's made the trip to Polymanga and to those watching this live stream, welcome to the Splatoon European Championship Finals. I'd like to congratulate all of the teams who battled through their European regional tournaments and made it to the finals. With so many talented Splatoon 2 players from across Europe here today, I'm really looking forward to witnessing some exciting matches. The winning team will be invited to E3 2018, which takes place in the United States this June. There, they will participate in the Splatoon 2 Worldwide Battle event. To all the teams here today, give it your best. We will be watching from the Squid Research Lab in Japan and cheering you all on. It's been around eight months since Splatoon 2 was released, and we've had so much incredible feedback from fans all over the world. I'm very grateful to our fans in Europe who are playing and supporting Splatoon 2. We'll continue our efforts to bring you more exciting Splatoon 2 news, so you can all continue to enjoy everything that the game has to offer. By the way, many of you may have heard, but recently at the Squid Research Lab, we've also started taking a keen interest in the octopus. Keep your eyes and ears open for the outcome of our research. Well then, I hope that you enjoy the finals and good luck to all the teams. Don't forget to cook. Stay off the hook. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Puli Manga, beautiful Montreux, Switzerland, for the Splatoon European Championship. The freshest and best inklings from all around Europe. Battle for the crown as the European Championship. My name is Rene Girona Butler, and with me alongside for today's championship is the one and only, the Splatoon Pro player Sandu. Hey man, how you like the arena today? I mean, what can you say? Like one of the biggest stages for coming to Splatoon yet, and uh, as a player myself, as a member of this community, like it's very overwhelming to me. We got a full pack Stravinsky area today for the last matches. We had a lot of matches today already, and yesterday, so it's a two-day tournament with the best 16 teams from all around Europe that want to get the crown, want to get the spot for E3 Splatoon 2 World Championship. Obviously, they played yesterday the round of 16. They played the quarterfinals a bit early. You got that on your screens, and. It was kind of surprising in some of the matches, but not all of them. I mean, we can see that、uh, France was actually able to bring two teams into the semi-final. We all know that's a strong nation in Spain, right? Yeah, I mean, France in general, like you know, they have a really big local community. You know, they have big tournaments with seven teams playing it. Like it's a very big country for Splatoon. So personally, I'm not surprised to see two teams from France in top four. Yeah, the UK still has Team 4D in the semi-finals. Unfortunately, they lost their number one seed, like the real UK champion,、uh, Team Mako.、Uh, they got deleted from the tournament a bit earlier, just alongside Portugal, Spain. They're all out. They're not here with us. I mean, obviously they're with us in the arena. They're watching、uh, the games today, but they're not part of the tournament anymore as they got eliminated in the previous rounds. Germany also lost one of their teams, but still have Gucci Gang in there. So. From all, from all of them, obviously two French teams. They are kind of favourite for this. But Gucci Gang versus、um, versus Team 4D. What's your favourite on that one? Well, I think Gucci Gang for me is a very strong team. Like even to win this whole thing. Like I know the players individually are very good players and they have been practicing a lot. So personally, I wouldn't be surprised to see Gucci Gang take the take, take the title here. But also for the like from what I saw, they had really solid performance yesterday. And、uh, you know they have many veteran players, so to me, like any of these teams can win it here today. Solid performance will not be enough if you want to go through the schedule here. If you want to make it into the final of the European Championship, obviously we'll start with the semi-finals today. We, we can't just start with a final without knowing who went through the semi-finals. So that, the first matches we will see is Alphamont versus Team 4D, so France versus the UK, and then the second semi-final, Alliance Rouge versus Gucci Gang. So at least two chances for France to be part of the final or even have an all-out French final. So that will be interesting point. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I mean, all French final 
is not so far away, but anything can happen. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, Team 4D and Gucci Gang, UK and Germany, they can stop the French powerhouses here live on the stage. Obviously, they will all play like right behind us. You can't see that in the dark right now. It's a beautiful stage. They're all there. It's a bit different to um, the previous rounds because they played them on the Nintendo booth down at Pulimanga at the convention. And now it's this huge stage in front of so many people out here. Do you think that could change it for some of the teams? I mean, I know from my own personal experience, like it's very different when you don't have a mass crowd and it's the first round, so it's not so high pressure. But in this moment, like all of those teams want to win. So it, it's very like a big pressure situation for all of those teams. And we know that at least Team 4D, they got offline experience. They have been at the Splatoon 1 mm -hmm. final back in Paris. They have been at EGX. Uh, for Gucci Gang, that should be the first offline final, as far as I know. Uh, for the French, did they had offline experience before? So, yeah, for France, there's actually quite a few like uh, local tournaments in France. So, I, I do think all of the teams have some uh, local experience. I think uh, Gucci Gang is the only one who doesn't have a local like experience before this tournament. Will be interesting to see if that has an impact. Well, we got the teams ready and we'll get the games underway. So please welcome to the stage, Team Frost. Like they're a bit shy. <laughs> but fans are ready for LP Moment, the first team of the French squad here. Still two of the teams in the semi final. And I mean, if they don't want to go to the stage, we could just grab the spots. Yeah, do a good old 1v1 and get something like that. Uh... Yeah, but people don't want to see me getting wrecked easily. Um, well, that's the. I mean, this will probably be, if it's Rainmaker, it's probably done in 20 seconds. Yeah, it might not be a very climatic grand final, but. Maybe we have to do it. You, you need to play the other way around on the controller, like this, yeah. upside down. Yeah, and I, yeah, play that, normal. That, I mean, that might be a secret strategy that no one has figured out yet. So We had some, some, some cool strategies in the previous rounds already. There's one player that actually has his controller built in a sock. He says he has better grip on the controller. It's, it's a sock troller, so we now call it. And is it, it, a lot of creativity in the Splatoon uh, community, right? Yeah, well, I saw a picture of that, and I was personally a bit, a bit shocked, to be honest. But uh, you know, whatever works for you. And personally, I mean, those oh, look at that! Good. They made it. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely got some support here in the audience. That's for sure. But obviously, they also have an opponent here, and that will be the legendary team of dudes. So welcome to the stage, Team 4D. Yeah, led by YouTuber Dudes, one of the biggest guys in, in the competitive Splatoon scene. Uh, the UK, but they're only UK seed number two. Yeah, they only got that in the second tournament, but still a team of veterans, like I said. By the, the sunglasses might be a bit too much in this darkness, but he wears his sunglasses at night. Doesn't matter. The hat, it's actually the same hat as he plays in-game. Uh, we checked it earlier on the booth when he was playing uh, the round of 16 and quarterfinals. He showed it to me. He was like, look at that. It's the same hat as I play in-game. Um, but the sunglasses are not in-game yet. Maybe that's part of uh, like a competitive DLC. <laughs> Yeah, maybe if the developers are watching, they can see some uh, fresh choices coming from 4D there. So <laughs> maybe we see the dudes beanie in the next version of the game. So here we got the lineup for the French team, El Pimament. They got Avaso, Gateway, Celsius, and Le Monkey. Yeah, it's a very, very strong team. And El Pimament, good thing to know about them is that that's their actual team. For the other teams, it's like uh, pickups made for this event. El Pimament is actually a team that always practices with this lineup. So I think that's one thing they have over the other teams here. So team chemistry could be uh, the deciding factor if they play together for that long. Team 40 obviously would do it, Dragonuto, Droot and Donut. A lot of these. A lot of these, yeah. I mean, that, that explains the 4D, right? Yeah, <laughs> very descriptive name. And uh, like I said, players I know from uh, 2015 and been playing a lot with Dude and with Donut previously and good players. So. 
We will see how they stack up against uh, the French powerhouse. So in the, in the previous quarters, the, the French team arrived pretty late, so they played their matches behind each other, and they were wrecking people. They were going through like a hot knife and butter, basically. Like, they really showed a strong performance, awesome skill. They were very, very fast in adapting. But we also know 4D, especially with Dude, when he got all the energy like on his stage, he loves to, to scream at his teammates and to really put all the energy in it. Um, that could be the motiv mo motivating factor, right? Yeah, I read a couple uh, LAN tournaments with Dude myself, and uh, he d definitely has the energy for it. But I think one thing with uh, 4D that, okay, l is a bit easier games, but for 4D they have uh, more experience here with uh, closure games. So it was a couple sets that were 2-1. So I think uh, 4D has the advantage in uh, more like uh, clutch situations where they have to be able to make those big plays. They will play in a best of three series. That means we'll bring up the maps and all the modes that will be played as we're running through the competitive modes basically without a clam blitz. So game number one will be Rainmaker played on Valley Warehouse before we head over to Splat Zone in the Kelp Dome and if needed, then we get tower control in the Black Valley Skate Park. Do you see any favorite maps of one of the teams here? Well, I think Walleye Warehouse is generally a map that everyone likes. Like, come on, there's not no one who absolutely hates Walleye Warehouse, so that's like a balanced map. So I think that's where we see how this team stack against each other. This neither side should have a big advantage on that stage. We know already from, from the round 16, the quarterfinals and all that, that there can be a huge gap between your performance on splat zones and your performance on tower control or Rainmaker due to the different setups needed. Uh, in terms of that, you think one of the teams is a splat zone specialist? Uh, I think between these two, I won't necessarily say so. If I would have to decide, I would maybe, just looking at the weapons they're likely to play, probably El Firmament has a small advantage on Splat Zones, but I think it should be pretty even in Splat Zones. And we'll see if we see a Charger on both teams or not. We saw totally different setups today. We, we saw some brush players. Obviously, Roller coming in for tower control was one of the most important uh, weapons brought onto those maps. So players right now, they will gear up, they will ch uh, choose not just the freshest clothes, they also choose the clothes with the best abilities on them. So tell us a bit more about competitive ability setups. So I think at the moment, like, there's a like, couple stronger ability sets. So in Splatoon 1, there was like one dominating set which was like quick respawn and so on. But in this game, it's more about your personal preference. Like what lets you bring out your own strengths as a player. So that's something interesting to see while the game goes on, is that what kind of sets that these players choose. That, that should tell you something about them as a player. We saw a lot of special ability, like that the special ability meter feels in faster. Uh, in the previous rounds, and obviously that strikes a bit harder. It seems like Stingray is one of those abilities brought to every single map. Yeah, Stingray is, uh, well, it, it's a dividing opinion, but Stingray, in general, like, is something that you always want for defense. Like, you think about it, like, if there's a Rainmaker advancing, Stingray is a really good special for you to take care of that Rainmaker safely from your own base. So I, I think in, in most cases, I think the string, Stingray player has a lot of responsibility in these games if the players choose to go with that. All right, I, d I don't really expect a bubble blow that we had that on Splat Zone. I, um, especially the Italian team, I think it was Crossing back then. They only played that. They bring, bring in the, the bubble blower, made sure that they splashed right on top of the Splat Zone to cover it, but they weren't really able to then take it for any longer than that splash, basically. They got it for a second, and then any, the enemy team came in, took it back immediately. So do you think there are some, let's say, one-trick pony strategies that could work in such a semifinal? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And you come from lower rounds, but pretty much all things, all sort of things can fly. Like, for example, the bubble blower thing that you mentioned, I could see do it, for example, bring it out with uh, first pass of pro, and that is definitely a very viable thing to do. But like you mentioned, it's just first pass zones. It's like a small relief when you reset the zone and then you lose it again. So maybe we, now we'll see some other kind of specials instead. So players are getting ready. We saw, which is always interesting in, in such live arena plays, the totally different faces of players. Some of them are smiling and just having fun, enjoying their time. Others might enjoy their time, but they look way more concentrated on, on the screen. I mean, look at that. The French team <laughs> sits fairly relaxed. Yeah, that's one thing. And also, it's interesting to see like when the game goes on, like how different players use the controller, because that's something you don't see in online environment. But here you see like many different styles, like uh, how the controller angles are and so on. So that's always really fun to watch in a local tournament like this one. 
Yeah, the, the move control on, on the Switch is a bit different to the Wii U version back then, but we saw um, today and yesterday, play, some of the players have it on only up and down, mm -hmm. and then doing everything else with the joystick. Some, like, dude has it left and right as well, left and right, up and down. Mm -hmm. So the, the full movement, whatever they can do, is there, what do you prefer when you play? But personally, I don't do so big movements, and like, I, I, I feel like I'm pretty like standard player, like I don't like anything crazy. But some people, you can see like them holding the controller like upright or like completely level or anything in between. And it's just to me like it's so fun, fun to see all the different styles people have and then they still have the same like great performance. So that definitely tells a lot about the controller methods. There we see the Switch Nintendo Switch. Obviously, they all bring their own Switch. As we got the docks here, they just need to put it in. That's one of the great features of, of the console. And then they're ready to go. Yeah, that's it. Like uh, I was at Genesis 5 LAN tournament earlier this year, and that was like one of the big benefits for, for now having the switch. You just pop it in and take the control, and you're ready to go. When with before, if you wanted your own co console, it was like Wii U, and you had to like bring it all, and it was uh, not as convenient as with Switch. So I, I think that's a really great thing for the players for a LAN tournament like this one. Was dude actually live streaming from the stage? Was that live on his phone? You saw him hanging around with the phone, probably doing live stream right now. Am I on the camera? He's, he's okay. Am I on the camera as well, dude? I just want to make sure you you will make me famous. Uh, I might be too far away. Actually, get me on that camera, but it's all right. I, I got the big one here, so <laughs> it's not that bad. Waving to their fans. See, we wait for them to be ready to play the first map here. We talked about that already. Valley Warehouse, one of those more neutral maps. Mm -hmm. Not really one of the maps with crazy plateaus. Not really giving an edge to any of the teams. Yeah, well, personally, I, I like starting with a map like that because neither team should have a crazy advantage. So it really comes down to who knows the basics better. For something like Walleye Warehouse, like, is very, very basic as far as maps go. There we see they get the teams already. Obviously, put them in the right team. <laughs> Otherwise, this might be not that good yet. We see Druid, Liquid Dude, Dragonuta, Donut. They're all in 4D. And the rest is Elfie Moment, the French team. Yeah, looks good to me. Get it going. <laughs> Rain Maker. Obviously, just to explain that mode, in case people don't know, there is this weapon in the middle. It has a shield. You need to pop it. If you pop it, then it explodes in your color, basically. Then you pick up the Rain Maker, and you want to bring it into the opposing base on a podium. Yeah, that's it. And especially in these high-level games, you normally don't see the knockout coming out. Like I talk about, Walleye Warehouse is pretty neutral map, so it's quite hard to knock out. So for high-level teams like this one, it usually comes down to points. So you gotta be smart about: Do I go for the points early and uh, you know risk getting wiped, or do I play more careful push? So that's so another thing to look out for. Yeah, always interesting to see how much teams like invest in the build up before actually taking the Rainmaker. Same for tower control. Like, do you pick the objective immediately and try to rush through somewhere, or, or do you try to make sure that in coverage is, is on point, that turf is the way you want it, to then set up your route? I think in general, like, that's one way that you see how well do these teams coordinate. How fast do they pick up the Rainmaker? Because with teams that aren't as used to playing together, you see that they have like a kind of like a fight, like, do I pick the Rainmaker? Who, do, who picks the Rainmaker? And you waste like valuable seconds like this. So you definitely want to pick up the Rainmaker as soon as you have advantage so you can get those points early on. Will be interesting to see which team got the upper hand today in the match. We saw some teams that had a very good first push with the Rainmaker. We had down to 19 today. We saw down to one. They got stopped right before putting the Rainmaker onto the podium. Everyone was sure that this game is done. And then they get stopped. Uh, yesterday, Team UK actually was it was Team 4D. They got stopped by Germany like that. Germany won with one inch in the end on the last second in overtime. So, hope the hall is ready for the first map here. It is Rainmaker. Make it rain everywhere. It's France versus the UK. Team 4D versus El Firmament. We got the UK on green and we got France on purple. But France is not even starting. They are trying to uh, chill out there. If something went wrong with them. Yeah, it looks like some kind of problems there. Yeah, they're not going. I mean, I see Selkiel moving in. But that's it, there's a booyah all over the place. We saw that as meme already. But it seems like they will restart that one. Did someone choose the wrong gear? <laughs> yeah, who knows what can happen in this local tournament. But there we already saw, like, I think one player that I personally am watching is uh, Brasario. 
So he's a roller player, and I think he's definitely one of the strongest ones in uh, Europe. And roller right now is a really, really strong slaying weapon. So I think when Brasari picks up the roller, we can expect some kills from him. So definitely gonna have my eyes on him. I can tell you from my own experience in rank mode, which is not as high as your experience in rank mode, you know, but roller players are the one players that I don't want to see on the opposing team because I'm always running into them. Like I'm, I'm swimming around, you know, like chilling out, da -da 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 -da, trying to get close to the objective, da -da -da, and then there's a roller, <laughs> done. Yeah, it's always like when you least expect it, when you least want it, then. Like, <laughs> or the fling. Them. I mean, let's be honest, when they jump up and fling the weapon then, they have such a huge range for such a powerful weapon. Yeah, for sure. But now we are at the local tournament, so I, I think you have to have much better spacing and you have to have much better like uh, rhythm to your game, basically. So you can't rely on the latency or anything like that, but it just comes down to your skills and your positioning and stuff like that with Roller. What about the sloshes? We saw sloshes yesterday, we saw sloshes today, this morning when we played out the other rounds. Do you think a slosher right now is always mandatory for your lineup? Well, I don't think mandatory. I don't think there's any mandatory weapons right now. But slosher for me is something that, okay, it's very strong to have. It's something that gets you very fast map control and has a really solid like uh, sub weapon and special weapon. So I, 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 we have many like really great slaughter players in the top four right now. So I think we're gonna see a lot of slaughter and it's a very strong weapon right now, yeah. Yeah, and the slaughter obviously giving you all the turf coverage that will need to, to swim further with it, but it's not the fastest, right? So what are the, the downsides to all the, the in coverage you do and all the damage you deal out? What is the downside of the slaughter? Well, slaughter, I mean, it's not always the strongest in a, uh, one versus one situations. It has quite a uh, quite a big uh, so-called like end lag. Like when you slosh, then you are st have to stay still for a long time. And now we are at the local tournament, so there's a lot of opportunities for the enemy to punish you from that. So I think that's definitely one big downside to slosher in general. What about the charges? We talked about back then in Paris when you were still playing on Splatoon 1. Charger players were the big thing. Like, if you had a good Charger player on your team, then you had a lot of map control. Uh, you made sure that the, the opposing team is not able to move around freely. Is Charger still that, like, practical? Well, I, I think going to Splatoon 2, we didn't right away see the same uh, strength of with the Charger players. So still, if you are a good player, you have a good aim, solid fundamentals, then yeah, you definitely can make some damage with uh, Charger. And I know for a fact we will see some Charger players here in top four. But your trade-off in control and such, so often people prefer to go to Spatling now, where you can get the same sort of like long-range skills, but also get the map control. Yeah, now you listed all the... Uh... All the abilities you need to have to play Charger, and then we know why I don't play Charger. So, we're ready. Once again, the UK is in blue, France is in yellow on the left side. There we go. We're going on first match here at Pauli Manga Stravinsky Hall here in Montreux, Switzerland. Beautiful plays. Um, the shield's not popped yet. Both teams actually going very aggressive in there. We didn't saw that in the round of 16, that both teams actually tried to fight for um, the pop off the shield, it happened now for the Team UK. We see all of them, one place, no one going for the outside. Yeah, so it's very important to get the first pop as you get map control. As you can see, Ford is right away getting out of the moment players after getting that map control from it, and they can start the early push. Dragonuto now onto the Rainmaker with the help of Dude that actually covered the right side of the map. They lost the Rainmaker right after that. 73, not that quick, but it seems like they will leave the objective to the same player all the time because Dude is always rotating around, like left and right. Yeah, Dude is a kind of player that goes everywhere, but I want to highlight the very good flank by Getway there with the mini battling and getting the rain make it was really big play by him there early on. And Rosario here with the splashdown made sure that the uh, the enemy is getting splatted. They had the reset of the Rainmaker, so it's dead center. Again, it's now getting to move four team throngs. There are 91. Obviously, they want to move through. There was the Stingray coming in. Also, the Rain 84 still. Liquid Dude tries to get that support off the Stingray to move on to the objective, but it seems like he doesn't really know where to go. Yeah, they still have the good map control, but I think there you saw the value of defensive Stingray. Like right away, they had the Stingray ready, and they goes down, and that's just how you're supposed to play. Dude, probably in the very bad spot. A lot of opposing ink around him. Yeah, there comes the splat in. I mean, there was no way to go for him, and it was yellow all around. But still, the UK popped the shield. Donut now onto the Rainmaker. Try to switch sides here to avoid uh, the French team, but he ran into a defensive that was just set up for him. Looks like a trap. Yeah, Donut was a bit alone there. Uh, they need to have a more, more players with her and pushing with her, so that was a bit uh, maybe a panic push there. 
Um, very close match so far, 73 to 84. So the aim is either to bring it to the podium or actually get closest to the podium. So the, uh, the French team is the furthest away with 84. And the UK is a bit closer with 73, but now they get it moving. Look at that, 44. They're down below 40 with that last push. There was the podium just around the corner. Yeah, they had a really good coordination with their specials, which is exactly what you need to do when you're pushing. You need to have many specials going on at the same time, and that is exactly what the Fairman did there. And they're gonna get like even more points. Oh, there. a double by really Dragonucci. Push. Had the chance for a triple, but got stopped by the opposing forces. Drew now moving in. They want to make sure that they get the Raymaker here because it's so close. It's down to 17. Yeah, 17. It's not a game winning push yet, but uh, it's, oh, it's a pretty solid one. And now. Before they really has to make a good push of their own. We see Drew basically using the Rainmaker to clear some space left, right, and center. Not, did not really decide where to go. He needs to defend himself because his team is currently not around him to help him out. Where's the rest? Passario with the roller. Splash down. This won't, no, this won't work. There was a wall in between them, and he gets the splat from the Rainmaker. Yeah, now we need to see for these have some better coordination with the Rainmaker user. He's been doing alone with uh, a couple times they tried to push. Get Axa here. He's in a very narrow spot just around uh, the Rainmaker. They still have the Rainmaker some, somehow close to the center, so it would be uh, a good chance here for the UK to push him over. Look at that. The France is in control of everything around the Rainmaker. Yeah, right now. So we see Dude doing a flank here, but he's kind of alone. I don't know if he's going to make anything happen from it, but yeah, right now the map corner is definitely in Alfredo's favor. Obviously, time runs down, but they waited until um, the reset of the Rainmaker to make sure it's the furthest away from their own spawn. Druid coming from all the way back. UK down by one player right now. So someone is respawning there. Yeah, right now I think Fordy just needs to take a small moment, gather all their forces, push together with specials. They don't have map control, so if they drop in one by one, it then it's already game over. Rosario has splashed down ready, especially in such a, a narrow spot. That's a great special ability to have. Awesome fling with the roller there to get the enemy. But still, the Rainmaker is waiting in the middle. The last 42 seconds. If no one pushes with it right now, then Frongs would win with 17 to 73. Yeah, you see Alperman just getting those picks, and that's so huge because Forty can never push with four players up. So it looks like a very difficult game for them right now. Yeah, they would need to get overtime. They would need to grab the Rainmaker and then force overtime onto Elfin Moment, the French team. But it seems like right now they did really found the right way while Dragonuto gets a great spot here with the Splatling. But still, that's too far away from the objective. The last 10 seconds, can they make anything happen right now or do they give away map number one here? We will know in five seconds. There's the rain coming in. Donuts still on the top of the plateau, but it seems like the French team can support it. Yeah. They're defending the Rainmaker dead center, making sure that Team 4D does not touch it again. Yeah, very dominating first game by El Firmament. I think 4D had much chances to get a good push going. I think for the next game, we need to see some better team coordination from 4D if they want to take the next map. Yeah, they would need to take that ma next map because it is a best of three. It means if they lose map number two, that will be done and dusted for them. They made it to the stage, which is a good thing, because they all wanted to be here. They all wanted to play in front of, of the live audience. But I'm pretty sure that dude doesn't want to stop at semifinal. I mean, no one wants to just go to the stage and 2-0 and out. I think they definitely want to win the next one. And it's Platform Skeleton, so it's a very different map. So I think it's a good chance for them to show us a different kind of game than the Rainmaker Warehouse. Everyone hotly breathing once again here on the French side. They need to stay concentrated. They got one map, but obviously one map isn't enough. Uh, to proceed in our semi-final here. They're in a good spot, we know that. With one up, you can feel a bit more relief, but let's be honest, if you lose that map, the whole momentum shifts onto the opposing team. Yeah, that's the thing with Splatoon. You can never be too sure about your victory. If it, it, sometimes it looks pretty good, and then <laughs> things happen, and it suddenly doesn't look as, as good anymore. So just, you need just to lose your concentration for 30 seconds, and you see that the uh, title have turned against you. Dude giving the last tips here, it seems. <laughs> His whole team is really professional. They, those guys know how to do that. Obviously, the girls as well. And we got a lot of mixed teams in competitive Splatoon, which is something I really, really love because it shows that they can all compete on the same level, which is great. Yeah, it, it's been like one of my favorite things about the competitive Splatoon as well, that there's been a 
many many gold players and as we see here, many gold players that play at the very top. So that's always uh, great for me to see. It will be the Kelp Dome Splat Zones. Obviously, the next mode quite different because there's no objective to move. It's always like the objective is always in the same place because you want to cover Splat Zone to get control over it. Completely different play style, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Splat Zones is way different from Double Control and Rainmaker. And some teams kind of like specialize in Splat Zones even, like they only play it. But I think for these teams, they are experts of all three modes here. But again, like, like we talked about, it can be a very different game than the last one here. We see we get it going. Here's map number two. Elf Moment versus Team 40. France versus the UK. Uh, the UK once again on blue, and it's green for the French powerhouse. Yeah, we see spatting from both sides, which is a very, very strong weapon for this stage. So, interesting to see how those spatlings match. Yeah, a lot of color being shooted already, but no one in control of the Zoysk. It's quite 50-50, basically. Uh, right now, going back and forth a bit for both teams. Get Axel on the top, Liquid 2 trying to move in. Great splat on the outside of the splat zone. He's now on the objective, trying to cover as much as possible, and the UK is in control of the splat zone as the first team here on the second map. Yeah, here you see the Stingray coming out earlier, though. So we can see like how Forty exactly is planning to remove the Spatling from the right side of the map here. That's going to be a really hard thing for them to deal if they can't do that. Get yeah, actually got pushed back a lot due to all those bombs being thrown. Dude, might, might be in problems there, but he got the baller to save him there from the splashdown. Still, it wasn't enough. He got splatted in the end, but they're down so to 63 that, already. That was a really, really good reaction by Dude. Like, those are the kind of reaction that really like separates like good players from top players. With that, they allowed to stay all four players alive, and now it's looking really, really good for Forty at this moment. Yeah, using his own special ability, not for attacking as he normally does with the baller, but to just stay alive and try to delay as much as possible on the objective uh, for the enemy team. Right now, it seems like the French team is struggling a bit. They weren't in control of the zone once yet, but they finally got it. Just jinxed it here, and they start to count down their timer. Obviously, it's now 20 plus 61 on the UK side. Yeah, a very, very strong hold from UK there for the first one, but now we'll see how UK can do retaking, since that's a very different uh, area than uh, just holding zone. Drew now moving around. They obviously try to get a new angle onto the objective. They're all walking around, basically, on the splat zone here with Monkey being right off. There, there we see it. That's the bubble blower. That's the tactic uh, the Italians introduced by the double here. Look at that Monkey. Yeah, getting uh, dude and uh, Donut uh, just one. Le Monkey just popping off like... I saw this guy do some insane stuff in top eight. And uh, it seemed like it's just continuing here. Yeah, it seems like that is a, a normal thing for him to get in the big splats with doubles or even triples here. Dude, once again, Getting and not the upper hand in this fight. Yeah, it's, it's not looking very good for Forty at the moment. But we're very good kill by Druid there if they can just ink the zone. It's not enough. But then look at that. They just got it once. They only needed it once off the hands of the Team UK. That's how good the teams are. Like, UK had it under control for so long, but give one chance to the French team and you might end up with losing the map. Yeah, absolutely. And there we saw the two different specialties for Splat Zones. One is taking it back and one is holding it. It seems like UK was pretty good at holding it, but just for taking back, they weren't able to coordinate it as well. So we got the winner of the first semi-final. It will be uh, the French team. I'm not sure about the name here in the lower right. I think it should be Elf Moment. But Team 4D is eliminated. Dude didn't make it into the final again after EGX. A big, big letdown when they lost. Uh, and Mako actually grabbed the title on EGX with Team 4D being out of the tournament on the first round actually against Team Mako. Yeah, I mean, that just tells you how good the top four is. Like, all of these teams are really solid teams, and uh, El Firman especially just so they strength in that game and uh, going to grand finals with a clean record. So that's pretty impressive to me. That is true. We'll say goodbye to the sunglasses here and the hat. Uh, I'm feeling kind of sorry. I like him as a personality on stage. Look at that. Oh, he's looking fleek, <laughs> on point. Yeah, it never feels good to lose like that, of course. Yeah, it seems like, I'm not sure, but they didn't stand up there. <laughs> it's yeah. too, oh, it, they, they, they won it, right? And Team UK lost the first map as well. Yeah, yeah and something happened that we didn't see. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did we miss something, Sandu? That's something we're gonna find out soon. You should find out. <laughs> I, I just act like nothing happened and I, <laughs> I'm always in control. <laughs>
be let's just roll with it and uh, <laughs> see where it leads us. Well, that was a great first matchup. We saw it like the UK had that splat zone. I actually thought they will take it, and maybe in the first push they didn't. France came back, so it seems like from from the perspective of Team Moral, they're really stable because we know there could be teams that are panicking. You, you win map number one, and then you have no chance to get that splat zone off the hands of the enemy. And then they start panicking, starting to rush in instead of trying to synchronize their attack again, go for a different angle. People could lose their hats about that, we know that. I mean, have I mean, it's, it's a very like high pressure situation when you look at that splat zone and you see the counter ticking down. And in that moment, for, for many players, it can lead to a more panicking decisions. And that's bad in this game because you want to, of course, coordinate well with your team, right? You have to go in with all four players. If someone's panicking, then it's not four players, it's three players. If two are panting, then it's only two players pushing together. And for me, for 4D, I would want wanted to see more team coordination, more pushing together, more pushing with specials. I didn't see that in those is the, games. Is that because, like, obviously that's the image of 4D, but they get carried by dude a lot normally. Is that not enough anymore for like the European stages to, to miss out that everyone can carry the game in case one of the guys is not in his best shape? I mean, that's just not the game. It's, I mean, it's for people. And I know it's not like, it's not only dude in that team itself, but I think for uh, 4D, especially, the thing is that they had the least practice out of all the teams there. But now we have, uh, I believe, Rogue versus Kuchikang. So yeah, it's going to be are, another interesting uh, match. They are to on have. the stage already, but look who just Hello. joined us here. Hello. Welcome to the caster desk, basically, in this Hello. big arena. And uh, yeah, you did it. You just did 2 0 against Team 4D. Yeah. How does it how does it feel it like it's is it the first big arena match for you guys? Yeah, it was one of our greatest match uh, in Splatoon 2. Uh, we are really excited to play the grand finals right now. <laughs> so is there anything that you think you need to change? Obviously you had two O's, so it wasn't too much of a challenge, people could think. Was there anything that you want to improve on until the grand final? Yeah, that's not the case. We didn't win easily enough. Like, uh, not were... easily <laughs> enough. That's confident. I mean, they were really strong. Uh, we had a lot of trouble in the second match on Splat Zone in Cape Dome, uh, where they pushed to 20 points and it was really hard to keep up. But I think we just tried and hard enough so we could win this match. And if I said what we can improve for the next match, mm, I'd say our team play and our ability to take kills off uh, the opponent. How did you maintain control of the match even after the UK had their timer so low on Splat Zone? It, it looked like you were struggling to get even onto the objective to have an impact. How did you cap up team moral and make sure that you guys pushing that one last push and take it away? Well, it was all things to get where our Splat League, who is really keeping with a tough control. So with him uh, on our team, we can really easily uh, get the zone, and then we can block everywhere, every pass. Now, now that we know that Grand Final obviously has the map and modes written out already, you guys know what you will expect in the Grand Final. Do you have all gears, setups, weapons already set for the Grand Final, or will you watch the semi-final now and then maybe adapt part of it? Well, to be honest, we really train the first map of the tournament. So, uh, Splat Zone, Gobi Arena, uh, Tower Control on Starfish main stage. But since we didn't know if we were about to go in the Grand Finals, we didn't train a lot of the, the next maps. Then better get your switches ready. I mean, you can play everywhere, even backstage. <laughs> Getting ready for the Grand Final. Yeah. Um, from the two teams that will come up next will be Gucci Gang and um, Aliens. So, which one would you wish for in the final? Uh, I'd say Gucci Gang because they're my friends. <laughs> oh, I, I was expecting those. So like, oh, the French team will be great because then we know the European Championship will be French. But you prefer the Germans? Yeah, I like German people. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank you. It's, it's all good, man. <laughs> all right, so we saw different weapon lay layouts you used onto uh, those two different maps. From all the modes, we have Rainmaker, Splat Zone, and Tower Control. Which one is your favorite? Uh, I'd say Tower Control is my favorite mode. Tower control. Okay, we will see what we will see what happens in the grand final and uh, which map they might take in the grand final. But it's time to get the new teams onto the station. They are all ready. So we will have on the left side that the guys in blue. That is the French team, and right on your screen right now. That oh, they lose. They're, they're just leaving. Did we miss? Thank you guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> they just decided that, hey, this weird man is talking about us. We should better get going. <laughs> it's all right. No worries. So let's let's start and bring bring them bring them one on one on stage so they can have their moment on on the arena. Um, but we heard it. They like they like the the German team more. There is another French team in it. Do you think it's just because they do want to lose against their own? I mean, I don't know. For El Firmament, they have more experience playing against Rogue, but at the same time, Rogue has more experience playing against them. So maybe they don't want to play against an opponent that knows them too well. So that could might be one reason. Yeah, that could be one of the reasons, but please welcome on stage the second French team. It's Allianz Rogue. Definitely, whole support is with the French, it seems. I hope the Germans get a, a proper welcome as well. Yeah, also do. There we go, everyone with their headsets, everyone getting ready. Obviously, they saw uh, the other team already winning, so they know they, they want to get in the grand final. They don't want to lose out. It's Ezra, Sorin, Kyver, and Gray. And we know Kyver and Sorin probably some of the strongest players in Europe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can say that about any of the players. Like, to me, this is an all-stars lineup. Uh, it's just about how well they come together in that match. To decide who All right, but it's time to meet their opponents for the semi-final. Please welcome on stage the Gucci Gang from Germany. <laughs> German efficiency just right onto the seat, setting, <laughs> getting the headset on. Let's go. <laughs> They're not waiting for every, anything. Gucci Gang, WADSM, Majin, Kaito, and Echo. Yeah, th th that's another very strong team. Like I said, Rogue is an All Stars lineup, but this might as well be. And uh, especially like Majin is some player that I will definitely watch out for. He's one of the strongest Rabbit players since uh, Splatoon 1. So it will be interesting to see how the rest of the team comes together. Gucci Gang, obviously seat number one from Germany. They won the German qualifier. I was there back then in the studio when they took it. It seemed like they were under control of most of the matches, but as soon as something happened that they weren't expecting, like losing out on, on a certain objective, they might start to struggle a bit. But we're back. Map number one. It's Rainmaker. It's the warehouse. It's France versus Germany. And we got Germany on the pink side and the French team in what's green tile? <laughs> Greenish color. Greenish color, that's all right. Both once again going very aggressive for the objective. They're not waiting like in the round of 16. Kyver now rotating up to the platform, trying to get around to WADSM. But there is another player right waiting for him. There's Echo on top of your screen. He will get Kyver in a fight. You're trying to get him away from the objective. So far, no one even touched him. Yeah, so we saw the Rogue get the first pop there, so they get the map control. But different thing happened than in the 4D versus uh, uh, three moment game, and instead, uh, uh, Kuchikan got the small advantage after that. WADSM brings the baller, no splat with it, so control is with the. Um, is that the French team? Yeah, they got it, the French team got it. Sorin playing, to, playing the front row for the Rainmaker, didn't really pay it off. They came the staying ray in from Germany. We talked about that super Im important special ability, and it seems like they just used it in the right moment. Yeah, I, I mean. That's like the perfect defensive thing, and you can see the power of it. Like instantly, two players go down, and the push is done. And that's a really good play by Germany there. Uh, currently, Ezra and his team they pushed it to 48. Then the reset came in uh, from the uh, from the German team. They made sure that it gets back all the way to the dead center. But we can see map control there is definitely with the French. Yeah, absolutely, and it's looking pretty good for Alliance Rogue now. If they can just uh, make a one coordinate push, it's gonna be a Oh, oh Kaito with the jetpack, jetpack gets Ezra. Yeah, he really, tried really to get a mid air, but there was no chance. Echo, sneaky, just going in there, getting the Rainmaker, getting it going in the direction of the French uh, power. It's off the French podium. They're going over the left. It seems like all of the others are to the right, but they splatted the Rainmaker yeah, right here, on top. Yeah, we can see Martin use bombers right away, but he goes down. That's a very common thing that uh, uh, teams do, where they die with the Rainmaker, and then you have the Rainmaker said you're gonna instantly pop it with the bomber, so that was really strong one thing that I tried to do there. We had a full team blow basically, so Germany had to respawn with all four players. Look at Echo with the charge and taken one by one. They're really being uh, the defensive tower they need there. Yeah, well, we talked about the charger and how good it is. Well, I think Echo has showed how good it can be if you know what you're doing. Still, the Rainmaker wasn't 40 
for the German team. So they took the lead with that one push, but 48 and 40, we're not talking about crazy numbers yet. Yeah, this is not a game-winning push yet. So I'm still excited, excited to see that one big push coming in from either of the teams. And right now it can be really either of them like. Kaito even. got the jetpack, used it for the first flat with his teammate there. There could be a triple in there for them. He gets Kai with it. I think there was Sorin on the left, but he couldn't really get the shots connecting for that. Who got the Rainmaker? Rainmaker is with the French squad, or was with the French squad. Uh, but that center again, so not really getting any points in. The baller, I think that was WASDM. Yeah, nice play by Kiver there, dealing with the baller. And uh, this is another one of those uh, things that show you an expert player. The Rainmaker to the right side, so not um, respawning. They probably wait for that or wait it out somehow. Kaito, they all try to get control of mid once again, but the French team is really holding that strongly. We see a lot of green color everywhere. Now Germany moves forward at least a bit, but Stingray is coming in, so everyone has to get away from it, trying to not get splattered. Another Stingray for Echo as well. He goes back, probably using Stingray against Ezra here. That's a really big play by Echo there. He goes at one splat, jumps back, gets Stingray off. Really smart play by him. So Sorin with the Rainmaker now. France is getting it to move it once again. That was the middle, so they finally crossed it. He needs to avoid uh, the Stingray. <laughs> Look at him dancing left and right, but it was splatted in the end. Yeah, you can see the difficulty here. Every time they're pushing, uh, Kuchikang has the Stingray at ready, and uh, it's very hard to push at that situation. You have to hold control for a long time to make a push despite that. We are below a minute, and Germany could take this map by just eight points. In case Kaiver and Sorin and his teammates are not able to get it now, it's respawned in the, in the middle. They used the suction bomb to get it off quickly. But is that enough? It's another 36 seconds to go. They're now getting a move. There's the 48 on the... Oh, they get splattered right on their own marker. Yeah, they still have the Incarmor to work off with, but then again, the Bombers is coming off with, with matching, so... Kaiva very happen. strong, 1v1, we saw that there. They take the corner, amazing, got it as well with the blaster onto him. He gets Sorry and Gray, a double coming in for the Germans. Can they pop it in close? But it's 35 for the French team. They made it happen. They now need to carry it all the way over to the map but to it's, make it's sure they win. Big lead they need to take. It's only 35, so... Yeah, but still, they need to get to the 40 first. It's three seconds, two seconds. Obviously, they get overtime if they're still in possession of the Rainmaker. But if it gets popped once, it's done and dusted here. They still have it. They're still in the middle. They try to move everywhere. Now they have the Stingray ready, so now Kuchikang has to move if they want to get this game going. Who got it? It's Echo, and Echo gets spot in the middle. And that means Alien Root, the French team, gets map number one. Yeah, that was a very back and forth game, but I think you saw the expertise of Rogue there at the end. Since at the very high stress situation, they were able to keep it calm and get that one crucial push, which won us won this game. So, yeah, very very close map here. Both teams actually had what it takes to win, but at least from my experience, from seeing on the map, it seemed like the French team was better in making sure that turf is covered. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. But for me, Kuchikang saw some better objective play. Like, you could see those Stingrays coming off from Echo, and they were really big in making that game for them. But now it's Splatzone, so there's not the objective, so we gotta see what uh, Kuchikang is able to do here on Splatzone's Cup Dome. Yeah, are the Germans able to take game number two, map number two, to actually stay alive in the semi-final? Or will we actually have in an all-French grand final of the European Championship? I mean, I'm pretty sure they got the support of the Hall for the all-French uh, lineup, but I would like to see a, a mixed nation final. Yeah, I mean, Splatoon in the European Championship, so you would hope two different uh, countries in the grand final. But like we talked about, France is a very strong Splatoon country, so it would be well deserved for them. Definitely, we don't final. need to talk about that. They came here, they showed uh, impressive performance. They never really struggled in any of their matchups so far. Not that they have been easy matchups, but they showed that they can do It's not like a lucky shot. We, we saw the, um, the German team against Team 4D. I think it was Halo uh, that faced Team 4D. And they just got one map off the hands of Team 4D with a very lucky last push on overtime and took it away, and then next map they got smashed immediately. So that, that never happened to, to the French team. They never took a map just out of, co of a coincidence. Yeah, I see what you mean.
Kelp Adome, it is map number two, semi-final, and number two, still France versus Germany. The French are ahead by one. They could eliminate the German squid squad here if they take split zone fast enough. Soren, Ezra, Kaima all moving in, but they got Kaita, WDSDM, and Echo on the other side. Seems like no one could get the upper hand here in the skirmish. Yeah, it, it seems like Gang is going down, though, but it's uh, sort of like 2v1 in the middle now, or 2v2, so we see who is able to catch the control here. Who will be the first one to take the zone? There's the rain coming in, helping out here. We got the French and green again, and orange. That is the color of Germany right now. They are the first to take the zone, but hey, we saw that in the other semifinal. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but there's a small difference here. Watson goes down with the rain cloud there at the end, I believe. So n now they're already down a player when uh, Rogue makes their first push here. Yeah, everyone is back. Soren obviously got the roller ready, brings it into the objective now. They try to take the way, tries to get up to get as big of a splash as possible, and he did, losing control for Germany, but they, they, it wasn't enough to take it immediately. Yeah, so they were trying to coordinate the specials, but I'm guessing it just didn't quite work out like they thought it would. Kaito got the splash down ready. Currently, they're leading 61 to 100, getting very, splatted very, very mid good. air. Very good, good uh, splat by Soren there. Major now walking around. The Germans are doing good here with the splat zone. Seems like that's more their mode. They're getting out Grey on the outside. And I think there was uh, Soren just around the corner as well. Kaito moving in from the opposing angle. And uh, it's 40. Yeah, it's been a pretty good game for Kutsikang so far. And I think big factor here is Machin and Rabbit Blaster. It's a very strong map for Rabbit, and I think Machin has been putting in some work. Look at that Machin with the matchup against Kyber. His teammate helped him out to make sure that Kyber's gone. Also get Ezra. That are two down from the French team. Three in total right now. It's two versus... No, one versus, three, uh, versus two. We had for a very short time. Machin on it, and Germany takes the map number two. They stay alive. Bringing us the map for it. Yeah, that's what we want to see. But I, I think here we see Gelblom, how hard it's actually to get in. Even good teams struggle with it. Even good teams have problems getting the old four players pushing together. And it, we saw it in the 4D game, and we saw it now again. Yeah, it is the first time for us here in the semi-finals that we will go to map three, which means we will see tower control as the deciding map, which is more... I mean, it's a mixture between Rainbow and Splat Zone. Like, sometimes the objective is moving. But to me, at least, it feels more close to Rainmaker, which was something the French were able to grab. Yeah, so for tower control, I think good thing to know is that, I mean, many players like it. And for Germany, especially, okay, this is a country where Blaster is extremely popular. You look at a German player, and probably they play Blaster, at least at one of their side weapons or something. And then you have Skate Park, Tower Control. Well, what's really strong here is Blaster. So that's, I, I think by, by default, this is good map for Germany. Yeah, Black Belly Skate Park will be the deciding map. Obviously, a lot of uh, elevation changes. This this tower in the middle that really helps, but you need to get up there first to actually grab the tower. Is it about fast movement? Well, I, I think what really defines the map is that it, it, it can be neutral for quite a long time, but then it's kind of like snowball. Like when you get, get it rolling, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and harder and harder to defend. So I think that's what we're going to see here. There we are. We are at the skate park. Get your skateboards out and get ready here for map number three, the deciding map between France and Germany. France is on orange and Germany. There are the purple guys from the right. All the inklings coming in now. Moving on to the tower, WADSM uh, is moving up first. He tries to get on the tower, but he got Kaiba right in front of him. Kaiba gets it. We're soaring together. They pushed onto the tower, moved it the first inches. Not that much, but they got control. Yeah. I think Kuchikan is kind of spread out there. Machin does a good uh, splat there. But one thing I would like to highlight about Machin is that I'd say, while he's a good Octopus player, I was definitely expecting him to go rapid, same as uh, Grey on Alliance Row. But it seems like uh, Kuchikan is starting their own push now. Yeah, Germany was able to push back the French squad and uh, wipe them out completely. Look at that. They really came forward. They're close to the first checkpoint. But then they can split Machin now with the brush here. Put it onto, uh, onto the first checkpoint, running it down 89 to 67. It seems like the German, they, they found their rhythm, they found their strength in this matchup, and this will be very hard. Yeah, we might see the snowball that I talked about now. So we need to see some specials going off from Alliance Rogue as soon as possible if they want to avoid the knockout here. 
There it is, 32, 31, moving on to the second and last checkpoint. Ezra tries everything, gets the double against Kaido Major, but then gets spotted right in front of the tower. That might be the last move. It's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Germany takes map number three, making it happen. Germany eliminates Alliance Rukia. The Gucci gang will be in the grand final. Yeah, I think Gucci gang just in those last two games, we showed the, really the power of them. So they know Splatstones well, they know the double control, Raymaker well. What a matchup! They got behind 1 0 on the first map, then they took the second, got all the momentum on their side, and then took the game on map three, eliminating the French squad here, and we got the mixed up grand final. Yeah, I mean, that's great to see. You know, there's probably some German people watching, there's probably some French people watching. So now we have a representation for both of those, so I think that's pretty great. Will be exciting to see how the grand final now looks like because, like I said, the Gucci gang in the previous matches, they, to me, they didn't look as much in control as the French are. Uh, the French Elfim are meant, obviously, they, they want to win. Both want to grab the trophy because it's all about going to uh, Los Angeles for E3, uh, participating in the Splatoon 2 World Championship, facing the, the biggest teams of the world. Obviously, that's something everyone wants to do. They want to represent uh, their nation there, but both teams also can struggle sometimes. The Germans more lately, the, the French look better, but it's a grand final, it's a live audience, a lot of pressure on those shoulders. So that might be an interesting one here. I think one thing about Gucci Gang though is that they've been playing harder opponents in this tournament. Like Rogue, to me, was my favorite to win this tournament so far. Well, Gucci Gang just took them out like no problem. And before, I believe they played Team Mako, which is another than, like top counter for me personally. So while El Firmament has had very solid games so far, I don't think they have had as many like those tough games, which is like they need that experience right now in the grand final if they want to win. Yeah, experience is needed. Obviously, you said that already. We lost Team Mako, the other UK team, the actually UK champion uh, with the siblings on it. They got two female players. The siblings considered as one of the best players probably in the world besides Japan. We know they're super strong over there, uh, but they really didn't got in the mood. When we saw them on the booth, they were very like, into themselves, not really trying to, to lift the event. They tried to stay focused and it seems like that didn't work. You got it on your screen. That's how everything played out and how we do uh, the final now. Still a chance for two nations to grab the European Championship trophy, but this will be a super strong grand final. Yeah, I think this will be a great uh, set to watch. Like El Firmament, Gucci Gang, both of those phenomenal teams. And personally, I can see either of them take the trophy here. Yeah, the trophy. Obviously, there is a cool trophy at the end. We will have that moment where we've got shown, finally, that trophy that is there for the European Championship. And uh, it will be one of those moments you don't want to miss. I mean, obviously, you can be proud of making it to the stage already because there are 16, 16 teams of the best in, in Europe. So you made it to the stage, but then being so close, being in the grand final, it's sitting there like, I could go to, to LA. I could have the World Championship uh, on my hands to, to do something with it and then losing it, ah, that hurts. I mean, personally, I was in the same situation one year, one year ago. We actually had a friends team go last year when we had the Co-First Platoon Grand Finals. And then we had Rising Moon, which is also a friends team, which actually had Ersa that is now eliminated. But we see the strength of the France is like uh, year after year. But yeah, yeah <laughs> losing a Grand Final like that, uh, it's uh, really tough. So I, I don't think any of the players come here to grand final to lose, like, that's not a possibility. All the teams are ready. Gucci Gang, obviously, they stayed in their place because they just played the semi-final, and now we go into the grand final. It's map number one, our last match of the day. El Firmament from France versus Gucci Gang from Germany. The Gucci Gang on green, while we have the French team, El Firmament, on blue. Yeah, it's pretty standard lineups from both teams, what we've seen in the tournament before. But uh, again, uh, by default, I would say this is a pretty strong map for Gucci Gang. And just looking at those weapons they have available. It might be a strong map for the Germans, but it was France taking the tower first, moved it back immediately. So not much going on, but look at that. Look at the in coverage done by the French team. That's huge, because they got the wipe, but they're also pushing forward very fast. So they get the map control. You look at how the whole, uh, whole base for Gucci Gang is blue right now. And that is not the color they want it to be. Stingray on the German side helped them to stop the tower right after the first checkpoint. But first checkpoint is done, something the Germans didn't achieve yet. 
and again, I, I keep repeating it, but the strength of the Stingray in defensive pushes, it, it was very, very, very bad for Kuchikang, but one Stingray and they're back in the game. Monkey and his team, they're all pushing it forward to 63. Galix spotted on the way up. The ramp there, Echo waiting on the other side with Kaito to stop them to, to build up a defensive line here to make sure that Elfimland cannot move further in their territory. They finally get it over the line here, get their tower moving in their direction. But the French coming back, there was the rain helping them out a lot in that center. Yeah. I, I think it's been super strong to start for El Firmament so far. And I think one thing they have over uh, Kuchikang is map control. They have the minis battling that can put a lot of ink down for their team, which makes it easier for them to move. So I think that's one thing that El Firmament is doing right. Echo being a friend of plants and trees here, but working on top of that tree, but still his team is trailing. They only got 99 so far, 63 on the French side. And it does not look like the French want to give up that at all, they want to keep it pushing. They once again push it over the middle right into checkpoint two. That's where they want to go. Get Axel is there already on the plateau trying to keep the blue ink there for the French team so his team can move more freely. They are at checkpoint two, but currently there's no one to possess it. Yeah, we see the Stingray coming off again, and uh, that's been the theme of the game so far. But one thing I want to highlight is Gateway Minis Battling, how he's playing it very aggressive. It's not, it's not typical for Minis Battlings. But for Gateway, he has such an expertise over the weapon that for him it's possible, and I think he's had some great results with that weapon so far in this game. Germany with the ink armor wasn't enough for Echo. Brasario stopped him with the roller right on top of the tower, and they're getting it done in their way again, but there's still three German Major now onto the tower. WADSM tries to get Brasario off with the roller. He really needs to stop him, but Brasario gets the split on top of the map. Echo moves in, and France pushing it back once again. Yeah, here we see the strength of the roller. It goes around the map so fast. So even when you have your headset on, you're calling out where the roller is going. Well, he moves so fast that it's very easy to lose track of them. And that's when really dangerous things can happen for your team. Kaito had the chance for a double. At least got one. That is enough. Double wasn't possible. Mage needs to get away. Otherwise, he gets splatted easily. Towers, once again, dead center. Celsia falls for Mage. Mage was pushed back here by the rain, which is a problem because the Germans need to finally touch the tower again and get it moving onto the French side. Yeah, uh, Germans have been on defensive here. And uh, to be fair, they defend is good, but uh, this is not a mode where you can only defend. You also have to find an opportunity to attack, and I think this could be it. Bomb ending there. Brasario has the high ground, but wasn't enough. Still getting stopped. Selzio trying to super jump to get away from Echo Stingray there. Germany finally getting it moving onto the way of the second checkpoint. They're sitting on 66 compared to 54 on the French side. Brasario also falls to Kaito. Great movement here, left and right, trying to be in control of the upper plateau here. There's one sneaking through, he couldn't stop them, but he now gets it. Get Axe is done, Mason falls onto the tower. They're getting pushed back from the tower, but they made it! 53! With just one point, that was a really, really clutch moment for Kuchikang. They all go down, but guess what, they got the lead, so good job by them. Yeah, now France has to push it all the way back in the last 40 seconds to regain the lead here on map number one of the Grand Final for the European Championship. Echo with his Charger still trying to make sure there's enough way for him to move in and out. Because Charger, you're a bit unmobile, that's the problem. He's the, oh, is he building up Stingray right at, yeah, at the Yeah, that's it. So the game is about to end. So what Echo wants here is a Stingray, so they have a strong defense here. Last 15 seconds, but the French are moving in to checkpoint number two. No, they're losing it on the last 13 seconds. They're just in front of their own target. They could still do it. It's seven seconds to go. They're on their checkpoint. They could run it down. They will not do it. They could stop. Germany gets them right on the checkpoint, ending it 1-0 for Germany. I mean, we could have thought of like a closer game to start grand final with. First, we see Kutsikan take lead with just one point, and then at the end, almost El Firmament taking it back, but just barely stopped. So I think that's going to tell us how close this grand final will be. That was the crucial stop. France was on the tower. They had it moving. They were sitting exactly on the marker. They only needed one more push on it. And then Germany was able to stop that in the very last second. Yeah, uh, to me, Germany, in that game was like a bottle that you're shaking, and first nothing comes out, and then the 
but uh, cap goes off and everything comes out at once and they get the one good push and guess what that's enough they have echo who is excellent defensive player and he, he does a lot of work for them when l3 minutes trying to push yeah in terms of time in tower control like how long they control tower i'm pretty sure that the french team would be ahead they were way more in possession of the tower they had it moving way more often but it was germany that pushed it the furthest even by one inch yeah well, that's it like sometimes these games come down to just one point and uh, that's platoon i think the French, they're not giving up yet. They're concentrated. They want to take map number two and take it this take this to map three. But it is the chance for the German team to end the grand final here with a 2-0 against one of the strongest teams in Europe. Obviously, since that's the final of the European Championship. But do you think, like normally we say, you win a map, you've got the momentum on your side. But now you also got the pressure. You know that you actually have it in your hands. Yeah, I think yeah the pressure thing is also to be considered. But to me, Gucci Gang, they came from semi-finals straight to grand finals, and they won the last two games of the semi-finals. So for them, the momentum has been building up for some time. So to me, Gucci Gang definitely has the advantage here. But what about endurance? I mean, we know that you can't just keep up your concentration on, on a high level all the time. Now that you said it, that they played all those matches behind each other because they had the semi-final right in front of it. Could it be that if France is able to bring this to map three, that they might run out of concentration on the German side in map three? That's it. And it's way more exhausting played here on the stage. You see the pressure. It's just a different environment. At home, then, the, okay, you can play a longer time, you can play two hours, but here, 20 minutes is two hours. To there we are. Monte Maria is the splat zone map. Number two here, Germany is leading by one in a very, very close match on map number one. Germany is green, a French team is a purple. Yeah, I can pretty standard weapons from both sides. Uh, here we see Slosher Dego coming from Watson, which is a really strong weapon for Splat Zones at the moment. Interesting to see, Germany took the upper level for the first approach on the Splat Zone, while the whole French squad was going underneath them. Get access still on the Splat Zone, but WADSDM moved in, got the Splat, made sure that they got one of the two zones, because this map is special, they got two zones. They got two zones, and like you talk about, they got the high ground there at first, and it's very impactful on the stage. You want to hold those crates around the mast, that way you can easily paint both zones, and that was what uh, Kuchikan did right in there in the first push. Down to 66 already. The French team needs to push them back. Film and needs to push in right now on both flights, or at least one to take it away to make sure the count is not running down, and they do. But Germany got it back right after, especially with Echo helping with the charge on top. W ADSM is on the, fo uh, the forward push, trying to push the French back to their own spawn. And this looks very good. Could that be too much? Could the loss on map number one be too much for the French team? 25, but they get finally stopped. Yeah, now they need to make something happen with those specials. We saw the bombers come out. Very good control by the French team there. Ensures that they won't be knocked out early. 75 plus 57, that makes it a bit hard enough for the Germans as they lost control. They gave it for just two points onto the French side, which will, which will delay their win, so to say. Like, it, it takes a bit longer now, but they look in control. Even with Monkey trying to avoid all the Stingrays, he doesn't get splatted. Oh, he finally falls to Echo. Echo not giving up with that Stingray. He wants that uh, splat. Now with the charge on top level, obviously that gives him the best overview and most range. Yeah, I, right now I feel moment needs to stop getting picked off right this. They need to get four members together, get a special push going, but it's just 20 points remaining. It's not looking too great for the Firmament at the moment. Still three minutes to go, but the timer runs out on the German side. They might take map number two. They could be European Championship. It's the last four points for them. They do it. They do it on map two. 2-0 against Bronx. European Champion will be Gucci Gang. Yeah, I'm not surprised personally. Very strong team, and they saw in that grand final just how strong they are. Look at that, they are the winners. They took it 2-0. No one really expected it to be a 2-0, but these guys, these young people over there on the stage, they made it happen. Uh, they finally have a bit of relief, you can see that. It's like, ooh, all right, we did it. We finally managed to get those important rounds. Is it because they started slower and became stronger and the French were strong all the time? I, I mean, to me, Gucci Gang, like, they had the advantage in those clutch moments. So they always made the right place on the right time. But I think one thing I want to highlight is that Machin and Echo were also in Paris one year ago when uh, we previously made a 
uh, Splatoon 2 World Championship. And back then they couldn't win it, but this time they came back and they're the champions. So I think that's pretty great that uh, they were able to make a comeback like this. Yeah, great match, great match we just saw in the grand final. And obviously, that leads us to the big, big moment, the trophy moment. So please, let me introduce to the stage David Heim from Polymonga. He will give over the, the trophy to the winning team. That will be the one big moment for the Gucci gang here. So bring the trophy on the stage. There we see it. Also the jersey of the champions. They will get a new jersey for the World Championship. Uh, the Splatoon 2 World Championship over in LA. Yeah. <laughs> They struggled. They didn't struggle with the lineup on the map, but they struggled a bit here to get got done for the trophy moment. But there they are. They get the jerseys. That will be their new jerseys for the next stage. They made it. They went through the German qualifier. They went through the European Championship, and now the World Championship is up for grabs. Yeah, for sure. Personally, I'm very happy to see the development of Gucci Gang. Like I know they did a lot of practice in preparation for this event, and. Uh, no, yeah, no, trophy no, lifting moment. The crowd loves them. That was the great last match. You can see it, the jer jersey wearing trophy, basically. The trophy of the European Championship for the Gucci gang. The German seat, a number one. They took it here 2 0. Very favorable team. Yeah, absolutely. But, <laughs> I just love how it looks like. Oh, it's uh, flo flowing away, basically. But. That is it, that was the Splatoon European Championship. Let, let's recap it once again. We had all the qualifiers all around Europe. So many teams uh, participated, tried to actually get to this event first, the Switzerland event here at Pauli Manga in Montreux. They had to qualify for that. Then the top 16 teams, we flew them over here, had great two days. They, they enjoyed the time. We enjoyed the games we saw on the booth uh, all over the place. Uh, the public was able to visit all of that, to see all of that. And then this lovely moment in Stravinsky Hall, this great auditorium for the big European final. Great crowd, really, I love that. I have to thank everyone that came around for the European Championship or watched it at home on, on YouTube, on Twitch. Everyone out there, I, I can't say more, I just loved it. Yeah, personally, like, uh, I'm very uh, grateful that I was able to be part of it, like uh, spectating. And to me, like seeing Splatoon on such a big stage, like uh, you see the potential and yeah, it, it was a really great event. Uh. A great event for sure. We got the winner, Gucci Gang, and that means that we can also say thanks to everyone involved on this project. Obviously, Nintendo, Polymonga, all, all the companies involved, all the admins, all the player managers, everyone that makes such an event happen. Obviously, thanks to you as well for joining me at the caster desk. And I have to say, for your first time, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That was the European Championship over here. Splatoon World Championship up next. Los Angeles E3. See you there.